So here it is, the ViewSonic XG2431, a very unassuming monitor on the surface, but today I'm going to show you why this should be right at the top of your list if you're after a new 1080p 240Hz display. At the same time, this is one of the cheapest 240Hz displays that I've tested, in fact it is the cheapest. It's even cheaper than the MAG251RX, which was kind of my budget 240Hz uh, recommendation, but this is better than that, and it's even better than the Zowie XL2546K in my opinion. We'll get to all of that in just a moment. Firstly, uh, you don't get much in terms of the exterior design at this price. $330 US doesn't really buy you much there. It's a pretty basic cheap stand, uh, but it does have all of the adjustments that you need, although you don't get stuff like a cable management cutout, unfortunately. The OSD menu buttons as well are absolutely atrocious. I mean, they probably are the worst that I've used. There are some moments where you press them in and they don't really do anything. But let's just dive right into the best part about this monitor, and that's the unbelievably good motion clarity. This display is using a new 23.8 inch 240Hz IPS panel from Inolux, as opposed to the slightly larger 24.5 inch AU Optronics panels that we've seen come out over the last couple of years. And yeah, this thing is damn quick. You don't notice the 23.8 inch versus 24.5 inch, they all feel kind of the same, but the IPS panel on the ViewSonic is easily one of the best that I've seen for competitive shooters. Now, just a bit of a recap, aside from the refresh rate and the colors and the input lag of the monitor, which are all really covered quite well here. Uh, what we really want to see is how clear the image is of the display while there is a lot of motion on the screen. That's achieved with faster pixel response times and it's how you'll be able to see exactly what is in front of you as opposed to a blurry ghosty mess. So again, aside from the monitor's refresh rate, this is easily the next most important thing that you should be looking for in a fast competitive display. As usual, to test this, we'll be using the moving UFO test from blurbusters.com as well as a moving camera to capture the image. Now we'll get to the blur reduction aka backlight strobing modes in just a minute, but even if that's not something that you're interested in, the XG2431 is still very, very good without it. So here are the three response time settings in the menu. They are standard, advanced, and ultra high. And for once, the highest setting is actually the one to use. It provides the least amount of ghosting, while at the same time, no overshoot or artifacts that you can notice. To put into perspective, just how good the 240Hz ViewSonic actually is, here it is next to the current fastest display on the market, the 390Hz Acer Nitro, and the highly regarded and popular BenQ XL2546K. Now, these are two monitors which perform quite well with backlight strobing, we'll get to that in just a moment, but just looking at the pure response time performance here, the ViewSonic absolutely wipes the floor with them. The 390Hz Acer Nitro has noticeably more ghosting, and the BenQ has some inverse ghosting with some artifacts, but what's crazier, the ViewSonic is the cheapest monitor in this lineup, and honestly, it's not hard to call it a steal looking at this comparison. Now, if you thought that was good, let's take a look at the backlight strobing modes, which for those who don't know, this is a motion blur reduction technique, which is incredibly effective in reducing the ghosting behind a moving image. The way that it works is it shuts off the backlight between screen refreshes, and the backlight is only on once a screen refresh is complete, not between the transitions. So on the XG20, 2431, this mode is incredibly good and 100% worth using. In fact, this is the cleanest looking strobed image that I've seen on any gaming monitor yet. So here we're looking at a couple of the different preset modes, light versus normal, at least the two modes which have usable brightness levels in my opinion, but also a custom tuned mode as well. In collaboration with blowbusters.com, there's a program here which actually allows you to fine tune the strobing mode to your preference, adjusting the strobing width, phase, and overdrive level. Now I'll save you all of the confusion here, but even by hand tuning these levels, I was only able to get a slightly better looking image compared to just having pure XP set to the two other settings. So honestly, just setting the strobing to light or normal based on your brightness preference is going to give you a really well tuned and clear result. Again, as a bit of a demonstration of how good the ViewSonic 240Hz actually is, here it is next to the XL2546K and the 390Hz Acer Nitro, both with their strobing modes enabled. Now aside from the bit of crosstalk, the ViewSonic is easily the clearest out of the three. I'd say that this is as close to the reference UFO image that I've seen, and it's honestly a pretty long way ahead. So big thumbs up to ViewSonic and Blurbusters here, this is an incredibly good result, and a lot of it is due to the new Interlux panel that's being used here, it is just really really fast, but the tuning of the strobing mode does go a long way as well. 
But there is a downside, unfortunately, and that is brightness. The reason that I didn't show you the other pure XP modes is because the max brightness in those modes is just unusable. And honestly, in the other two modes, it is passable at best. I mean, if you game in a bright room with the shades open or with a bunch of lights on, even the normal and light mode, which are the two brightest modes, they might be too dark for you as well. I play in a fairly dim room most of the time, and I also don't like my display to be too bright. I find that it fatigues my eyes after long sessions. And so I actually found the three modes that I showed you earlier to be pretty comfortable. Definitely don't take this point lightly though, especially if you game in a really bright environment, the brightness of your display is pretty important. In regards to the input lag of the monitor, there's not a whole lot to say here because it falls right in line with what I expected for a 240Hz monitor, just slightly faster than the Zowie XL2546K. There is about a one millisecond penalty by enabling G-Sync at this refresh rate, which is pretty normal, and about the same result when enabling backlight strobing. Now, as for color performance, we're working with an IPS display here, and it is really, really solid. The color temperature is really close to our 6500 Kelvin target right out of the box, although a little on the warmer end, but with pretty much zero color tint at all. It is pretty normal to see a slight tint here on these 240Hz gaming displays, which would require a bit of correction, but with the ViewSonic, it is extremely solid without any adjustments. Color accuracy is also very on point, just using the standard default picture profile that the monitor actually ships with. The differences here between the measured and reference colors of our sRGB test, they're too small to notice to the human eye. So aside from being one of the best competitive displays on the market, even just regular day-to-day -day use and viewing content online, that's gonna be really comfortable and accurate. The contrast ratio is a bit on the low end here at about 930 to one, although that's kind of typical when we're talking about a monitor with these kind of specs. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't have minded a color mode with support for larger DCI-P3 coverage. To get good colors out of this display for competitive gaming, that is vibrant and punchy, Nvidia's digital vibrance at at least 70% is pretty much a must. What would have been perfect here is what you'll see on something like the 1440p 270Hz Acer Predator, which can display an absolute huge range of colors, and that gives you an image which is extremely good for competitive games. At the same time, that monitor also has an sRGB mode, which is perfect for viewing content online, so that your YouTube videos don't look oversaturated. I also think that the Zowie XL2546 has a more punchy, vibrant image that favors esports a little bit better, especially when you factor the range of different color profiles that that monitor has. But at the same time, it can suffer from color clipping if you push it a bit too far. So you don't get that wide, expansive color experience here on the ViewSonic, but given the price point, it is kind of acceptable. Not so much of a complaint, but just something to keep in mind. Again, I would highly recommend using digital vibrance on this display, as well as maybe tuning the gamma and black equalizer settings to your preference. So wrapping things up, I would happily call this the top 240Hz monitor option at the moment. And I mean, if you're someone who has been looking for an upgrade to 240Hz and you've been saving some money, this is like the perfect option to be arriving at your doorstep. You've got really good IPS colors. You've got a really good strobing mode as well, although don't feel pressured to use it because even in non-strobing, the response times are really good and the ghosting is really minimal. And just overall, it's a really solid option. The best part is that it's like 300 bucks, which is like not dirt cheap for a gaming monitor. I understand that it is kind of getting there, but for a 240 Hertz monitor and for what buys you pretty much the best of the best, yeah, that is really, really solid. Is it better though than the 390 Hertz Acer Nitro, which I reviewed late last year and have been using as my daily driver for competitive shooters? That monitor comes in at about $400 US typically, and I do think it is worth that extra $70. The response times and ghosting don't appear to be as good, and the strobing modes aren't as well tuned as what ViewSonic and Blurbusters have done here, but you are getting an additional 150 screen refreshes per second, and it can display a slightly wider range of colors as well. For competitive FPS titles, that is definitely a worthwhile jump. For regions where the Acer 390Hz isn't available though, like here in Australia, the 240Hz ViewSonic is easily the next best option. And I mean, the fact that we're even putting a 240Hz and 390Hz monitor in the same conversation, that should be more than enough to tell you how good this thing actually is. So 100% will be leaving this one linked down below. Uh, it did take a while for it to finally launch, but it does look like it's available worldwide definitely check it out if you're looking for an upgrade. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.